Oh. Yeah, best of luck with that. Now, I've been uh, talking today about the new proposals by the government ministers in England which would ban the sale of smartphones to anyone under the age of 16. This is something many parents are worried about, but what is the best way to manage your children's access to screen time? And we've got lots of calls to get through. Councillor Kate Silverton is here. Okay. Should we get straight to mm. it, Kate? Because Thank it's just yours, a minute. Uh, we've got Chia on the line in Wales. Good morning, Chia. Hi, Chia. Hi, good morning. Oh, good morning. What would you like to ask? Uh, I've got an eight-year-old daughter and I find she's hooked on her iPad all the time. If I tell her to come off, she lashes out. And also I find it hard because I'm hooked on my phone as well. So it's hard to balance that out. Yeah. She tells me, oh, you're on your phone, so why can't I have my iPad? Yeah, well, obviously, this is something we can all relate to as parents. So let's start with your daughter, first of all. And it's really good for us to understand, for very young children, their brains are not fully matured just yet. So the part of the brain that I call the wise owl, the prefrontal cortex that regulates big emotions like loss and disappointment, is not fully developed just yet. So it explains why when we take the iPad, something that our children are enjoying, anything that they're enjoying doing, it can trigger what we call a stress response. And actually, certain brain chemicals, one of which is called acetylcholine, that makes us feel very angry and very hostile. So that's in adults as well as children. But in children, if they experience this, no, you've taken my lovely thing away from me, it feels really big. And that's where we can see them go into that sort of fight oppositional behaviour. So that's the first thing to understand. Because when that happens, it can trigger us. Because then we're thinking, whoa, you know, this. We'd, none of us like dealing with anger. So what I talk about... In, in my book is SAS, say what you see, acknowledge the upset and then soothe. So we're not going into battle with our children. We're going to say, you are so cross, you're going to meet your child at the energy which she's expressing to you, not telling her off or blaming her. You're, going to, you're understanding that this is really difficult. Sweetheart, I get it. Mummy's taken your laptop at your iPad and you are really cross with her. So you're going to meet her energy and the part of her brain that is really cross hears you, it feels heard, and then you start to soothe. I get it, sweetheart, but it's mummy's job to keep you safe, and it's too much time on our screens today, OK? I'll tell you what, I'm going to put my phone away as well. Shall we play a game? What would you like to do? Because the same part of the brain that gets really cross is what I call the baboon, it's the limbic system, but the same part that gets really cross can also be really excited about playing, and our children love nothing more than playing with us. I know it doesn't always feel like it when they've been on their screens, but trying to get into that soothing, you're going to meet her up here, you're not going to be scared by the anger, you're going to go, I get it, you really, really wanted to play on it. Mummy wants to spend some time with you here, sweetie. And then we've got to replace that laptop or iPad or phone with something. And what better than us? Because that, ultimately, that's what our children want. If we're on our phones, and there's no blame or judgment in it, because we're all in, in, in this world. But, you know, if we make a big play of, like, when she gets home from school, right, where are we going to put our phones? Should we lock them away? Making it playful, getting underneath the sort of horrible feeling um, beneath it. Is that sort of resonating with you? Because it's so quick, these, these phone-ins. But does that resonate? Yes, thank you, it does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so, so, thank you. Such, a good, such good advice. Good, advice. good yeah. luck with that, Chia. You've got to try oh, some of these you. tips. Good luck, Chia. Thank you. Good luck. Thank Let's you. go to Simon next in Nottingham. Hi, Simon. Yeah, good morning. How are uh, everybody today? Good. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, so this is about your six-year-old son, right? Yeah, I've got a six-year-old boy and his school promotes three apps. Um, one, and we are a paperless society, so his school is paperless, so we do everything through an app. He does his mass homework on his either iPad or his smartphone, and he's six. Now, a six-year-old boy has no concept, concept of time. So when you said, right, you've done your homework, take the phone off him, well, why can't I play games? Yeah. And how long can you play games for on it? You've got no concept of time, but it might have been on his phone for 20 minutes doing his homework. Yeah, such a good but point. But the school promote this. And I'm really glad, Simon, thank you for raising it. It's a massive issue. We really need a good rethink of education here because it's increasingly going towards that tech model, as you say. We actually know that writing things down is better for comprehension and remembering, but let's not go into that now. But we really do want to be mindful, as you say, of what we're modelling to our children, both at home but in school. Mm. It's a slippery slope. You go on an app to do your maths homework and then, oh, funny old thing, our children are going to start playing with it. So... 
I would like to see a whole rethink around this. I get that it's not an easy one, but equally, we've opened the door, we can start closing it again once we realise. The other things I wanted to say is, you know, as adults, we're told, don't go on your phone two hours before bed. And very often, our children find themselves doing their homework. That impacts on their circadian rhythms. Then we're left with trying to get them uh, to sleep. Mm. So I really think we need to be... The other thing I was going to say as well is that when we're... We're increasingly going towards this sort of uh, using screens, and a lot of children are finding, especially after a big day at school, that screens can be, and I'm not, it might be for your son, I don't know, but just while well, I'm, I'm on one, but they can find it very soothing. And I know actually for children who are neurodivergent, they can also find screens very soothing. So this is to say parents must make their own decisions. I want to be clear about that in terms of what works for you and your child. But what we really want to be sending the messages is that. Um, we don't want screens to be a self-soother. We want to help our children regulate their emotions. And it's increasingly difficult if, after a big day at school, as you say, they're coming home and they're straight on their screens because that's what also drives that, oh, just do a game, because it okay. just helps me with my big um, emotions. So I'm not sure what I'm really helping with time, apart from actually what I would say, parent power changes things. So what we all need to be doing, and I get it for schools because they're got their own pressures as well. But let's start thinking about what works for our children's brain development. And I share all the science in all of my work that I do. Schools have to follow evidence-based policies, or at least they should be. And time online should be restricted for very young children. We know that. We share the science for that. It supports what you've just been saying. So maybe going into your school to say, this doesn't feel like it's working. Talk to other parents. Get parents together. We've got so many brilliant organisations, safe screens, um, uh, a smartphone-free childhood. Log on. Become part of the community so we can change this. So that this everybody wins. This is completely over Nottinghamshire. This is, this is a Nottinghamshire... It's, you know, all over Nottingham is used. Mm. Yeah. So, so it, parents, it, parents have changed lots of camp things in the past, whether it was corporal punishment or children being left in hospital without their parents. It comes <clears> down to us to actually say, we're not OK with this, because we're picking all of this up, the stress, when at home, and it's not ideal. So uh, more power to your elbow, and, and I'll back you every, every step of the way. Lovely. Thank you very much. Good luck, Thank Simon. Thank you, Simon. Lovely. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. OK, let's go to Linda now in Carlisle. Good morning, Linda. Good morning. Hi, Linda. Yeah. Hi. I could relate to the lady at the beginning where you said about anger when you remove the yeah. iPad from the child. My granddaughter's eight and she'll go to the extremes of hitting the iPad, biting it if you try and take it away. Even when you try and um, speak to her and, you know, like negotiate, she becomes very, very angry. But she's also in year four at school and demanding her birthday's coming up. She wants an iPhone because if she doesn't get one, she'll be called a loser by her peers at school that already have them. Mm. Now, my daughter said no until you go to year seven, secondary, that it's not happening. And she, she's becoming really aggressive about it. Really? Oh, gosh. So, and, and a lot of the time, aggression sits on top of fear. Fear that I'm not going to be the same as all of my friends. The worst thing in the world for our young children is to be cast out of the group. It's that evolutionary part of our brain, again, that baboon that says, if I'm not part of the group, I'm going to be cast out. So we can understand that aggression that sits, as I call it, on top of fear. Now, the, the, what I'm really hearing, Linda, is your concern, your daughter's concern. So I wonder what you think about what you've been hearing this morning with Rachel, because I'm hoping that when we hear more head teachers coming out and speaking, and hopefully this adoption of this voluntary code, that we can start having more conversations with other parents and saying, actually, how do you feel about this? So that your daughter, uh, your granddaughter, doesn't feel like she's the only one. What do, what do you oh, think? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I would, I would love them to absolutely just do away with these um, iPhones in school at a certain age and, yeah. So, really, we're now looking for, for government to take the lead and for ministers to, to follow up on what, what you were just saying, Dermot, this morning in terms of let's take the pressure off parents. You know, we have yeah. a tough enough time as it is right now. So, let's have a standardisation and hopefully to take the pressure off for children as well as their parents. Yeah, I agree. Thanks, Linda. Oh, Thanks, absolutely. Linda. Thank you. Bye. Oh, thank you, bye. you for calling in. Thank We've you. We've got, um, got one more call uh, to get in. This is Natalie uh, from Hertfordshire. 
And Natalie, I think a lot of people will relate to you here. You have a 13-year-old son who basically, you, you would say, is addicted to, to, to tech, right? Yeah. Yeah, OK. Right. Give us a little um, just meat on the bones for us, please. No, that's it. Um, first thing, I take all the technology now off him. I have to take laptop, um, his iPhone, everything at 10 o'clock at night, because that's sort of like bedtime. Yeah. He doesn't... So... As soon as he gets back from school, he's on his Xbox playing games. He's talking to people because he's friends, not strangers, with yeah. his mates and whatnot. Um, but it's just from quarter past four, he'll come down, have his dinner at some time. Um, so we'll sit and have a conversation with him for 10 minutes. And then he's back upstairs on his Xbox or on his phone. Mm. And that's even at weekends as well. Yeah. I guess my, my question to you, Kate, is how much of this experience and Natalie's going through and so many parents go through is just a rite of passage when you're a kid? Like, I like nothing better when I was uh, your son's age than hanging out with my friends, playing on ZX Spectrums, and then going, you know, I guess the difference was... Were you hanging out with your friends in person? Yeah. Yeah. So that's the difference. And not only that, there comes a point where you want your child to go to bed. Of course. And at 10 o'clock, and you're trying to get them to bed, so and they won't go to yeah. bed. More controlled and it's really difficult, isn't it? Yeah. So. And also, it's just that... And there are tech... That there's a reason. When smartphones were first introduced, they were described as a big revolutionary thing, which they are and were. But there's a reason, it's interesting, that a lot of the big tech moguls restrict the access that there's, their children have. And some have. of them don't let, allow their kids to even play the Xboxes and things like that. So, so, so how can she deal with this? So, Natalie, I would say, well, first of all, what I'd like to say is never be... And I'm thrilled that you've, you've phoned in this morning because there'll be parents across the country saying, oh, this is, this is my experience. So, first thing I'd say is never be afraid to seek support. And whether that's at school, because perhaps school can get parenting groups together so you can start sharing best practice. Um, I would also say that sometimes going to see a, a children's counsellor, mental health professional, not because there's something wrong with your son, but because sometimes we want to get underneath what it is that is fueling that desire to be online. Mm. Now, it might be, as Dermot says, that he just wants to hang out with his mates, but then, as a parent, what we might want to do, and you can do this, Natalie, sort of, you know, can you help me out here? I'm wondering, what is it uh, that is really feeling so good about being online and really getting underneath the behaviour. We've got to wrap up now, so I would say seek support if you can because it will really help you and your son. Yeah. Amazing. Thanks Thank so you much. so much, yeah, we, Honestly, we could do another, like, really hour could. on this. I know. Not even scratch the surface, but do come back because I think it's such an I'd important love to. subject. Thank, Thank you. you so much. A quick word about Monday's show. You can get some advice from the Queen, the DIY, Stacey Solomon. Now, do you need help reorganising your clutter kitchen cupboards or perhaps you need inspiration to upcycle old furniture? Stacey is here to tell you all about it. Yeah, she? just email a question for Stacey. Your contact details this morning at itv.com. We need those by 11.15 on Monday. Coming up next...